Well, good morning and Merry Christmas uh, to you all. It's really nice to, to see you here um, and uh, to share in our Christmas Day celebrations. I hope it's been an exciting day already uh, for you. Yeah? No? <laughs> yes, of course. It's been exciting. Um, so we're going to share with you in the, the Christmas story uh, this morning. Now, we have no organist this morning, um, and all the music is going to come through uh, the speakers. Thanks to Joe, who's done a great job up there at the back, putting all the, the, the audio together uh, for our service. But all the hymns are well known, so it should hopefully uh, work uh, fairly well. So we gather on this Christmas morning, we sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we gather here on this day remembering the birth of Jesus uh, all those years ago and all that it means to us. The Word is light for those in darkness. Your Word, Lord, is light for those in darkness, and we now seek that light. Your Word is healing for the sick in mind and in body, and we seek that healing. Your word is power for making new people of us, and we seek that power. 
for ourselves, for our church, and for our world. Lord, speak to us this day as we gather here in your presence, as we celebrate this Christmas day. Lord, our desire is to know you more, to share in the joy of this day. We thank you, Lord, for all your gifts that you have freely given to us. Thank you for the love of family, uh, particularly at a time like this. Thank you, Lord, for uh, that we can uh, share in, uh, in the joy of this season with the food and the drink that we have, with all that is provided for us in this part of the world. We, Lord, we give you thanks. May we never take these things for granted. May we never take your great gift to us for granted. Lord, forgive us for our sins, the times when we are ungrateful, when we don't share uh, the things that we have, when we turn aside from you and don't walk in your ways. Lord, forgive us. And so, Lord, be pleased to meet with us now and hear us as we pray further in the words that Jesus has taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> now we've been lighting our candles uh, during this uh, season, this Advent season. And of course, now it's Christmas Day, which means that we can light all five of the candles. Um, any, anyone want to come and help me light the candles? No? Some of you have done it before. Yep. And you come. Anyone else want to come? Now, you've done this before. You've done this before, so let's see how we get on. Oh. One. You know, we've done this wrong, haven't we? We've lit the ones at the front when we should be lighting the ones at the back. Right, you want to come around this side? Let's, let's light the one in the middle. And we'll light this one. That's it, well done. So the big white candle marks that it is uh, for Christmas Day. And we've been singing, we've been singing a candle song, uh, a different verse for, for each week. And we've even, we've even found a fifth verse that we didn't know existed for the, the candle in the middle, for the Christmas Day candle. So. Um, again, we've got this going to come up on the screen with, uh, with the words, the tune is away in a manger, and we've got the first four verses with the music, but the fifth verse, uh, we don't have the music for it, but the words will be there, so you'll be warmed up by then, so if you could just keep, keep singing when the music stops. Okay, Joe, away in a manger for...
it should be working now. Yep. Anyone get any presents? Did anyone bring? Yep. Fiona? What did you get? You got that. Now that looks to me like quap. <laughs> A quap. Do you want to come out and let people see? Is it a koala? Koala bear, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Hamish, you've got a softy. You're, you're a big softy, aren't you? No, not this Hamish, there's one behind you. <laughs> he, he's got a pink thing. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at you as well. What is it you've got? Oh, it's one of... An axolotl, <laughs> but you haven't seen, you want, people don't know what an axolotl is, do you want to let them see? <laughs> Just in case you didn't know what an axolotl was, <laughs> and you might still not know what it is. <laughs> what, what does it come from? Um, it comes from Mexico. Oh, it comes from Mexico, right. That's great. On you go, you come back to your seats. Anyone get any unusual gifts this morning? Anything you weren't expecting or? No, 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 yes. A, a, oh, a slinky, oh right, that goes downstairs, doesn't it? That's, that's good, that, that, you can get a lot of fun out of, out of a slinky. Um, well, I don't know if anyone spotted this, this gift on the communion table. And, you know, it says on it, to everyone, the whole wide, anyone in the whole wide world, this gift is for. But, you know, when you see a gift wrapped up in brown paper, does it, does it make it look very good? Does it make it look very exciting? No, it doesn't, does it? Now, how many of you here of the older generation remember the days when you went into the shop to buy something and it was wrapped up in brown paper? And quite <laughs> Willie, yes, I knew you would remember. <laughs> and it's tied up with string, remember that? brown paper tied up with string and that's how you that's how you got everything there was people rarely ever used when I was young people rarely ever used sellotape it was tied up with with string um, or do you remember when you used to get everything in a bag a brown paper bag uh, as well I have a, a niece who's a pharmacist and she grew up in the west of Scotland and she, she moved down to Suffolk and uh, when, she was, when she was handing out the prescriptions to people she would say to them, would you like a poke with that? <laughs> now some of our friends here at the front maybe, do you know what a poke is? It's a, it's a, it's a bag, it's a paper bag in the west of Scotland. Uh, and so she got an awful lot of strange looks when she said, would you like a poke with that? Um, so here's a brown paper parcel. And you know, when we see something plain and ordinary like that, we think it can't be worth very much. You know, I just read this week, um, there was a, a busker just a few years ago now, um, a busker now, a busker, we're quite familiar with these people who stand in, in the main street and play musical instruments and you open their box and people put, uh, put money in it for them. Well, in Washington DC, this, this busker was standing in the entrance to the metro station and he was playing his, his violin and it was an experiment. And uh, in 45 minutes, well over a thousand people walked past him. A thousand people walked past him. Um, 
and only seven people stopped or put any money in his, his collecting case. And only, <clears throat> he, he, he got $32 for his 45 minutes playing. Um, and only a tiny, tiny number of people actually stopped for a, a few seconds to listen to him. But you know, he was playing a $3.5 million Stradivarius violin. And his name was Jamie Be Joshua Bell, who is one of the, the best classical violinists in the world. But because he was wearing a baseball cap and a t-shirt and jeans, no one recognized him for who he was. And they just got on about their business. And he made $32 from his busking. And normally people would have paid $100 each to sit in a concert hall and listen to him playing. But because he was plain and ordinary, People didn't recognize him for who he was. And that's the Christmas story because Jesus came and was born in a stable, was born just as an ordinary baby. People didn't recognize who he was. And that's what happens when something is wrapped up in brown paper. I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get someone to take this... Would you like to take the brown paper off for me? Just the, just the brown paper. You want to take that off for me? Um, we're, going to, we're going to sing our, our, our next carol while that's getting taken off. We're going to sing Child in the Manger. May is going to come and read for us. The reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, reading at verse 1. The author to Theophilus, many writers have undertaken to draw up an account of the events that have happened among us following the traditions handed down to us by the original eyewitnesses and servants of the gospel. And so I, in my turn, Your Excellency, as one who has gone over the whole course of these events in detail, have decided to write a connected narrative for you, so as to give you authentic knowledge about the matters of which you have been informed. In the days of Herod, King of Judea, 
there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of the priesthood called after Abijah. His wife also was of priestly descent. Her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were upright and devout, blamelessly observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. But they had no children, for Elizabeth was barren, and both were well on in years. Amen. May God bless to us this reading of his holy word, and to his name be the glory and praise. Our parcel is looking a lot more interesting now, isn't it, when it's, it's wrapped up in nice uh, bright paper rather than the, the drab brown paper. And, you know, one thing we, we know for certain is that um, this is Christmas paper because it tells, you, it tells you that on it. You know, when you get, when you get something for your birthday, what, what would... What's it kind of wrapped up in? Uh, yeah, you're right. It's, it's birthday wrapping paper, isn't it? Sometimes it might even have your age on it uh, for your birthday. So we know this is definitely uh, a Christmas gift. But um, the thing with gifts is that all you have to do is receive them. When, when Elizabeth and I were, were married, we, we ordered our three-tier wedding cake from Tunnocks. There's an advert <laughs> from, from, uh, from Tunnocks. Um, and uh, when we went to pay for it, they said, no charge. The family are, are giving you this as a gift because we, we knew the family. So it was a gift. All you had to do was to receive it. You didn't have to earn it. You didn't have to pay for it. All you have to do with a gift is to receive it. Um, Now, sometimes there are reasons why you might not want to receive a gift. Anyone think of any reason why you would turn down a gift? Why you would say, I don't want that gift. You think any reason why you might you might do that? Could it be because you didn't like the person that was giving you the gift? You might say, "No, I'm not going to take a gift from you. I don't, uh, I don't like you, so I don't want that gift." Or you might see what the gift is and say, "Oh, I don't want that. Um, I've already got one of those." Or I don't like that thing, so I don't want it. But this gift that we have is for the whole world, and it's a gift of God that he gives us in Jesus, and he says it's for everyone, and I want you to receive it. I want you to take this gift and just receive it for what it is. It's a token of my love for you that I would give you this precious gift of Jesus, my son. And and that's the great Christmas gift that is coming to us. We're going to sing another carol, and I'm going to ask someone to take the next layer off. You want to take take the next layer off for me while while we're singing this carol?
Now our parcel has got, well, a wee bit more intriguing because it now seems to be newspaper that it's wrapped up in. Um, and now, I know nowadays there are lots and lots of different ways of getting news, finding out what's going on in the world. And uh, young people, of course, it's all on the internet, isn't it? It's all on uh, uh, your phone or it's all on your, your tablet. You can find out what's going on in the world if you want uh, by looking online. It used to be the only way people would know what was going on was what was written in the newspaper. I noticed that some of the football results are on this one. That, uh, and that's how you used to find out what the, what the football results were or what was going on in the world. Um, and, you know, in the Christmas story, it was the shepherds who were told about the birth of Jesus. And it was the shepherds who, after they went and found Jesus, they went back and they started telling everyone about uh, what they had seen. They told people about the birth of Jesus, this unusual event of this baby lying in the manger. You know, and that's the way people find out, is by other people telling them, uh, telling them what's going on in the world, what's going on in your life, what's going on uh, about Jesus and the church. You know, we can get quite depressed these days because all the stuff we're hearing is about uh, church declining. You know, I was just looking up this week, and in 1910, 1910, there was a huge meeting in Edinburgh uh, called um, the World Mission Conference. And well over a thousand people came to Edinburgh from all over the world. And they came to have a meeting about how we might share the Christian faith um, all around the world. And that was in 1910 they did this. And, and people went back to their countries. And you know, the Christian population in the world in 1910 was estimated to be 600 million. That was the, what was estimated as the Christian population of the world, 600 million. Nowadays, the Christian population of the world is estimated at between 2.2 and 2.3 billion. So when we think that things are going in decline, in actual fact, in the last hundred years, they have gone really high. More and more people have heard the good news about Jesus and have responded to it. Asia, South America, Central America, um, and many other places in the world. The good news about Jesus' birth gets shared around the world. I've got another layer of paper to come off. Do you want to, do you want to take it off? You take, take the newspaper layer off for me and see what's, see what's under it. Thank you. It's gold this time. It's gold this time. And your know, gold uh, is a gift that, uh, who brought gold uh, on Christmas? Yeah, oh, you're gonna tell me, good. Who brought gold to Jesus on Christmas? The wise men, well done, well done. It was the wise men that brought uh, a, a gift of gold, because gold is a gift that you would give to a king or a queen. It's, it's something very, very valuable. And 
the, the, this gift of gold reminds us that the gift that God gives us of Jesus is that Jesus came to be the Messiah, the Christ, uh, the King of kings and, and Lord of lords. You know, when Jesus gets called Christ, um, that word Christ means the anointed one. And, you know, later this, no, not this year, next year, <laughs> later next year, King Charles will be crowned. And if you, if you watch that ceremony of Prince Charles being crowned, you will find that at one point in that ceremony, they will put oil on his head. Um, they don't pour it on, fortunately, now, but they, they, they do anoint his head with oil. And that's what it means to be an anointed one. That's what it means to be the king. Um, and that's what Christ means. It means the anointed one, the Messiah. And Jesus, although he was a baby in the manger, he was the king that God had sent among us, that very special person. Right, there's one layer to come off. Not to take, not to take that, that layer off. And it's a box. You want to open the box and see what's in it? It's a cross that's in the box. It's a cross. And we're talking about God's gift to us uh, in Jesus. And, and of course, although Jesus was a baby, and although that's why he was born, he was born because ultimately he would, he would die on the cross for our sins. And that is the gift. It's the gift of forgiveness the gift of God's grace uh, that is the greatest gift that anyone can ever receive and live under that great uh, gift of God's grace for us. So the manger leads to the cross and that completes uh, God's work of salvation in, in our lives and in our world. And that is the great gift that God wants to give for everyone in the world. Let's pray. Oh God, our Father, we thank you for all the gifts that we have received um, on this day. And we know that many of these gifts come with love from uh, the people who shared their gifts with us. And we thank you, Lord, uh, for that love that is expressed uh, through the gifts that we have received. And Lord, as we've thought of the greatest gift of all in Jesus, we we know that that is that gift to us because God loves us and cares for us and that he's given us that greatest gift of all. We know that God loves us and that Jesus died for us. And we pray that, Lord, we may again just know that, the completeness of that gift in our own lives and live it out. Lord, we pray for our world, a world in turmoil, a world that needs so much help at this time. And we pray for the suffering people in our world, particularly those who are caught up in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And Lord, we, we pray that there may be a, a resolution found to that conflict that will bring peace and justice together um, and enable the people there to live again their normal day-to-day -day lives in peace. We pray for all the Ukrainian families that are living in this country at the moment, Lord, that they may uh, know a welcome and a safety and a security here um, among the, the ordinary folk of our nation. And Lord, we pray for all who are suffering today, for those who will feel a sense of loneliness on a day when others are rejoicing, for those who will remember a loved one that is no longer with them, for those um, Lord, who will be sad when so many people are happy. We, we just ask your blessing on them. And Lord, your blessing on those who will struggle through this day 
either because of being homeless or being ill in hospital or being ill at home. Lord, bless them and draw near to them. So here are our prayers as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to conclude our service <coughs> now as we sing, Good Christians All Rejoice. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us on this Christmas day and forevermore. Amen. Just remind folk the service next Sunday is also going to be at 10.30 on New Year's Day. Thank you. <laughs>